Okay, let's take a look at Monday, October 16th, homework, starting with number one, write the following inequality. The word inequality means we're going to write a math sentence that has either a greater than, less than symbol, or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to symbol. So let's read the problem. A green candle is 10 inches and burns at 1.5 inches every hour. So it's burning at 1.5 inches every hour. A purple candle is 15 inches and burns at a rate of 2.5 inches every hour. How much time, so that's our question sentence, how much time will pass before the purple candle is shorter? There's our inequality word, shorter. The purple candle is shorter than or less than, we can think of shorter as less than, the green candle. So that tells us which direction the inequality symbol should be facing. The less than part of the inequality symbol should be facing the purple candle. So now let's just write the inequality. So we have, we're going to put the purple candle on the left side. The purple candle starts at 15 inches and is burning at a rate of 2.5. So we're subtracting the rate at which the candle is burning. So minus 2.5 inches every hour. So H is going to be our variable. And we're going to make sure that the less than symbol is facing the purple candle. And the green candle starts at 10 inches. That's our starting value. And is burning, so we're subtracting 1.5 inches every hour. Okay, number two. Write the following number in standard form. So first we see that we have a negative exponent. So that means we're going to make this number less than one. The way that we do that is by moving our decimal by the number of places shown in the exponent. So we're going to move our decimal four places. One, two, three, four. So our decimal moves there and just add zeros in the place values where there's currently no number. So the answer is 0 0.0006. Number three, identify the slope and y-intercept. The slope is always the coefficient of x. So the slope is four, and I told you in class, please continue to write the slope as a fraction. So four in fraction form is four over one, and the y-intercept our b, we use the variable b to represent the y-intercept, is 3. And the y-intercept tells us where the, in this case, the line is going to cross the y-axis. And the slope, the 4, tells us how steep that line will be. Number 4. Sammy has a square garden that has an area of <clears throat> 196 feet squared. So we have a square garden. It helps to draw a picture. And the area is 196 feet squared. He has been having an issue with wild hogs tearing up his garden, so he needs to install a fence. How many feet of fencing will Sammy need to protect his garden from the wild hogs? So we need to find the perimeter of the square, because he wants to put fence fencing around the entire square. So in order to find the perimeter, we need to find the side length of the square. To find the side length of the square when you're given the area, you just take the square root of the area. So when you take a square root, you're asking yourself, what number times itself equals 196? Let's try 14. 14 times 14, does that equal 196? And you see that it does. So the square root of 196 is 14. So now that we know that one side length is 14 feet, to find the perimeter, we can multiply that number by 4, and we get 56 feet. So we need to order 56 feet of fencing in order to enclose the entire perimeter of the garden. Number 5, Mauricio is buying a square tile from Home Depot. The picture below represents the tile that, has, that he has chosen. Using the picture of the square tile, determine the side lengths of the tile. 
So we know it's a square tile, and we know that squares have congruent side lengths. And since they have congruent side lengths, I can make 6x equal 2x plus 12. Because those two sides are equal, they're congruent. So set those two expressions equal to each other. And now let's solve this two-step equation. Subtract 2x from both sides to get 4x. Bring down your constant of 12. And now to solve for x, you divide 12 by 4, and you get x equals 3. But that is not your answer, because it's asking for us to determine the side length. Given the habit of circling or highlighting, at least, the question that you need to answer. So x equals 3. So we need to substitute 3 in for x. I can substitute it here or here to solve for the side length. 2 times 3 plus 12. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 12 equals 18. So the side length is 18. Does it tell us what units to use? It does not tell us the units. So we're just going to use the number 18 to represent our side length. But to get that, we needed a first solve for x. x equals 3, and then substitute that number in for x into either one of these two side lengths. OK, so stay tuned for Tuesday's homework video.